Coming up next on AVID Achievers, join us as we talk about the AVID certification process and the Certification Expo. Hello, and welcome to AVID Achievers. I am your host, Dot Arita, coordinator of AVID. Today on AVID Achievers, we will talk about the AVID certification process and visit the AVID Certification Expo. Each year, the 31 secondary AVID sites must participate in the AVID Center certification process to maintain their status as AVID certified sites. AVID Center is the national program which maintains standards sites must meet to be considered AVID certified sites. Teachers prepare for certification throughout the year by working towards outcomes set forth in their AVID site plans. The AVID Certification Expo is held each year in April and is a celebration of the hard work of the teachers, students, and site team members at each school. Today I am joined by Alexis Poganowski, the AVID Teacher Specialist. Thanks for joining me today, Alexis. Happy to be here. So the AVID Certification Expo is a celebratory day. Mm -hmm. um, it starts bright and early in the morning, mm -hmm. and we have visitors come from the businesses, communities, schools, and central office to hear about the great work done at each of the schools in our system. Tell us more about this part of the day. Even though it does start so bright and early, I think the first thing I would say is that you can really feel the excitement in the room. All of the coordinators come, they begin to arrive and set up their boards, and they're speaking with one another, talking about the year, catching up, and they're really ready and excited to bring in visitors from the community and from the board to see all of the hard work that they've done the whole year. So at the Expo, schools are able to share some exciting initiatives and successes mm -hmm. that their schools have experienced throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Let's see some of those highlights now. So we just started a mentorship program at North County High School where we're taking AVID juniors and pairing them with AVID freshmen. And we're, right now we're in the process of doing a bunch of getting to know you activities. They just did a school-wide scavenger hunt. And the point is that these juniors are um, weren't necessarily leaders in the school when they were ninth graders, but now that they're juniors, you know, they've really grown up and matured and figured out what it takes to be a good high school student. And we want to take what they've learned and teach or let the juniors teach that to their ninth graders. Um, so it's really exciting because the ninth graders, they have these juniors that um, seem so cool and like smart and um, involved and they really look up to them even if they don't want to admit it immediately. But um, it's been a really cool program because uh, they just, they've already started this bond with each other and it's really exciting to watch. Southern High, we're having a great, um, a great opportunity for kids. Kids are getting into colleges, we're up to about 90%. Uh, we have, our seniors are earning about, we're up to about $900,000 in scholarships, which I'm really excited about. Um, and we raised a lot of money for an AVID scholarship as well. Uh, we're going to be able to give about $2,000 just for AVID kids at Southern High as well. Uh, so I'm really excited about that too. As the Southern um, School Performance Coach, we really realized how AVID strategies really change instruction and change, change school, student performance. And so we've taken our AVID strategies really into our school improvement plan and trying to push it to go school-wide. The best part of AVID at Mead Middle School this year is the amount of ownership the instructional leadership team has taken in, taken in spreading AVID methodologies. We've really implemented a lot of Wicker strategies and done several PDs on strategies that can help kids. Right now, well, we just got a brand new school, so that's really fun. Um, in AVID, we're learning about, I'm a senior, so we just finished a financial aid lesson, which was really helpful um, for me, especially going to college next year. Um, I'm also an intern at the middle school, which is a lot of fun, because we help the kids with binder checks and tutorials, and it's fun to just go back to the middle school and um, see where it all began. Yeah, at South River High School, we focus this year on rigor. Uh, first marking period, 55% of our students had a C or better in their core classes. Uh, we worked really hard with writing and reading skills, Socratic seminar. During the third marking period, over 80% of our students had a C or better in their core classes. So that's something we're really proud of at South River. So at Crossing Middle School, we've been working really hard on student selection, making sure that we communicate with our elementary feeders and that we um, have had different parent nights and opportunities for a lot of students to apply. So we had a really big outturn of um, student interest 
and we've done a lot of really great field trips this year where we have been really showcasing what AVID's all about and that mission of that college going culture. There are exciting things happening at the schools. What do you remember as highlights from the expo? I think that one of the most exciting things to see is when you uh, get a chance to see a cluster really working together. So you've got a couple of middle schools feeding into a high school and they're all working on similar initiatives. So a lot of the times that might be something like a mentor program where the high school students are going down to visit and to tutor middle school students. That's one of the exciting things that we saw. I think it's also really neat to see everyone working together. Um, a lot of the programs brought kids with them that were able to share their stories and that's always of course a huge highlight as well. So the certification process starts right at the beginning of the year when teams decide what their initiatives are going to be for the year. So what is an AVID site team and what do they do? So an AVID site team is going to be comprised out of leaders throughout the building and the idea is to have a representative on the team from all of the disciplines. So English, math, science, social studies, a school counselor, an administrator, perhaps your testing coordinator, basically just to have representation throughout the whole school so that when these site team meetings are held and you're talking about, say, um, taking Cornell notes school-wide, which is an AVID strategy, that way when everyone from the site team goes back to each department, it helps to really make this strategy go school-wide. Um, throughout the year as well, site teams really work through their site team plan, which is a living document, and they'll have a goal that they're working towards, and they work together, a, a meeting about once a month to make sure that they can achieve those goals. And how do they decide what that goal is for the year? So they look at our CCI, which is our certification tool for AVID, and they are able to go through this massive document and really take a minute to identify their strengths and then their areas for growth. So ideally, their site team goal is going to be dependent upon where their areas of growth are and where as a team they feel like they can be most successful in achieving a set goal. And that CCI, the coaching and certification tool put out by AVID Center, um, the focus of that CCI is now on what's happening in the school absolutely, as opposed to what's happening just in the AVID elective classroom. Absolutely. No more are you looking at you know, what is happening in AVID elective and then stopping there. It is actually the base point that this is assumed, this is an expectation that everything that we're saying WIC or and everything else is happening no matter what in the AVID elective. Then you're moving on to that it is assumed that it's happening within the AVID elective and also within the students who are taught by site team members. Then it takes it a step further and looks at not only site team member taught students but also all students sitting in core classes. And then of course it moves on to our ultimate goal of strategies of truly being utilized school-wide. And the goal of this document and this progression is college and career readiness for Absolutely. all students, not just our AVID students at each school. Exactly, Dad. Great. So from the plan, they work to grow their students. So let's look at what some schools were working on. At Central Middle School this year, we are doing a really great job with tutorials. Our students are coming prepared. They are doing a great job asking higher level questions, and they're really supporting each other in their core classes. So this year at MacArthur, we have focused a lot on collaboration between our students um, and our students and staff and between our staff members on the site team this year. And we've focused a lot on inquiry, how to ask really good questions, how to delve deeper into topics. So if you see on the board, we're actually practicing a lot of the Costas levels, how to ask um, instead of level one questions, going on to level two and level three questions. Uh, AVID program has seriously been something that's to talk about at our school because uh, everyone knows that AVID kids have like all these, um, I guess, all these opportunities to do so much more with their lives. And they, they understand that AVID kids are really on their rocker with knowing what to do, where to go, what kind of benefits uh, students are provided at our school and other schools and other uh, opportunities that we have outside of school. Uh, I think a lot of people at our school are aware that AVID students have a lot of know-how, they have a lot of guidance when it comes to going to college and taking that next step into their lives because a lot of high school students don't really have that. One great thing about AVID at Corcoran Middle School, well first of all Corcoran is a national demonstration uh, middle school and we're the first middle school in the state of Maryland so we're very proud of that. Um, one of the beauty 
or great things about Avid at Corcoran is that all of our administration and our staff, as well as our students, are all on board uh, to support the Avid program and make it better uh, for the student success. So we're very proud of that. What it means to be a national demonstration school, that means that um, AVID is supported and used throughout the school. It's a school-wide effort. It's not just in the AVID elective course. Um, you can go into any of the classrooms throughout our building and you will see the teachers and the students utilizing AVID strategies. Um, it's a two-year process. We had to go to training at the um, Summer Institute, kind of started there. Um, and then prior to that, um, our district uh, our AVID district coordinator and our principal thought it'd be a good idea um, because we had kind of started that process with training of staff and professional developments and things like that. So the application was submitted, it was approved, and we had to go through the proper trainings and coaching uh, through our AVID national coaches as well as our district coordinator to make sure that we reached that level. Over the last three years, Bud Burning High School has been a wicker pilot. We've infused AVID strategies in everything, including the SIP plan our uh, PMOCs, which is our subcommittees for SIT, and we've also created a new mission statement which really reflects our goals of being college and career ready. So it looks like these plans lead to progress. So once you have your plan in place, then what happens? So once the plan is in place, the idea is that the goals are being monitored through a continuous improvement cycle. And in AVID, we focus on plan, do, study, and act to make sure, and that continues, that doesn't end with ACT. You know, after your actions, you need to go right back into the planning phase often. Uh, this very closely follows the continuous improvement model that our school improvement plans follow as well. Um, ideally, there is a very strong link between our site team goals and the goals that are laid out in the school improvement plan. So throughout the plan, do, study, and act phase, the site team should be analyzing data, going through, deciding if an initiative is working or not, um, and both monitoring the implementation of the goal and then the effectiveness of the goal. Great, and then how does the certification pro process continue? So it continues through data collection. Uh, you Hopefully the team is going back and revisiting our tool, that CCI that we talked about going through and making sure that progress is coming. They, they identified those areas of growth and they want to make sure that they've been able to, through their site team goals, to increase to a higher level for those. And they're adjusting their actions, they're looking at barriers and how to overcome barriers. Absolutely. What works and what hasn't worked and they're just constantly changing and evolving to reach their goal. Right, as I said, it's a living document so we really encourage that that goal you know, and ch is change in those action steps change to address the needs at the given time and based on the data that whether it's working or not. Great. So the students really benefit from the work of the site team. Mm -hmm. Students joined us at, at the expo as well mm -hmm. and they shared their pride in their programs. Yeah. One thing that is great about Old Mill Middle North Avid is the field trips that we take to colleges. When we take these field trips to colleges, we, it prepares us, we get a more look into what's out there, what we can do. Um, it gives us ideas of where we can go with our future, of other things. We talk to students, we talk to professors, we talk to the people in, the, you know, with the um, financial area. It's really helpful. I find it to be very helpful in our school. Avid at Old Mill High School is um, really good. It's a really good experience. Um, our seniors have raised $4.5 in scholarships this year. 75% um, of all seniors that have applied in the AVID program have gotten into and been accepted to a four-year university. Um, this year we held the 13th Annual Student AVID Leadership Conference at um, our school, so that was a really good experience and we got to meet with a lot of interesting people and um, a motivational speaker. Um, AVID at Old Mill High has definitely gotten me where I want to be, and it's a really good experience. So at Chesapeake, we've done a lot of work with the college um, application process, and a lot of uh, the stuff after that about getting in and like choosing your college. So um, the program's helped me a lot with all my decisions and stuff. So it's been a long ride, but it's been it's been helpful to have the AVID program there to help me and you know guide me through other things I wouldn't have known without it. At the Expo, visitors attend to learn more about what is happening in the schools, 
and to celebrate our accomplishments with us. The Morning Expo is open to the public with invitations sent to business partners, Board of Education members, and school and central office staff. Each school prepares to showcase what their school's work was for the year. So the Expo looks like a lot of fun and a lot of celebration, but that's not the whole part of the day. So what happens after the Expo portion? So after the Expo portion, even though the morning is fun and very celebratory and a great chance to show off a program, I think that the afternoon is my favorite part because that's where we really get a chance for coordinators to delve into the nuts and bolts of their program. They get a chance to share their successes throughout the year and lessons learned. Uh, it's a time where coordinators can learn from each other, really grabbing on to great ideas, and also, again, learning mm, what maybe they should and shouldn't try. So in the afternoon, we move down to the boardroom, and every coordinator gets a chance to share their portfolio. The portfolio is something they work on incredibly hard throughout the entire year, collecting not only evidence that supports their site goal, but also evidence to support the many uh, domains and indicators, and to prove that they're running a program with fidelity. This is a lot of data pieces, a lot of student samples of work, um, examples of teachers taking on leadership roles within the site team, maybe running a PD based on a Wicker strategy. So all of this time they really get to share with other coordinators what's going on. Not only with other coordinators, and this is probably even the more exciting part about the afternoon portion of our expo day is we also bring in very key people from around the county. We look at bringing in principals who we want to showcase what Avid is doing. We bring in people throughout the Board of Education the offices in Riva Road so that they have a chance to see the incredible things happening within our Avid programs at our school. Uh, in the last few years, we've really seen it grow to not only what's happening within the AVID programs within our school, but truly what these AVID programs are doing for students school-wide. Um, recently, I think those are the ideas that have been most exciting to hear shared between one another. So it sounds like this is a really good time for the site coordinators mm -hmm. to hear from each other mm -hmm. um, and to really gather some ideas for how to Absolutely. move their own plans forward in the next year. The AVID Expo seems like a busy and exciting day. There is so much to celebrate within the AVID programs in our county. Let's look at a few more of the successes shared. What we are most proud of this year at Chesapeake Bay is our college going culture. This year we've created t-shirts to wear for our college wear day on Thursdays. We have college trivia days also that will go along with our college wear day. We have teacher name plates that we've created for all of our teachers to display the colleges that they went to and getting the idea of co college and career out just to the other classes besides just the AVID classroom. So this year at George Fox, um, we kicked off the year with an AVID dinner, um, an AVID family dinner, and um, I think it was all about creating leadership opportunities for the students, and it was all student-led. We had student speakers and student MCs. Um, so it was a really an awesome program, and it set the tone for the year. Um, we also continued that leadership um, creating those leadership opportunities by sending a group of students to the Student Leadership Conference um, and they presented on maintaining a clean social media presence which was really, really, um, I guess, important for the students to hear and for the peers to, for them to share with their peers. Um, we're also creating student leadership opportunities in the AVID classroom using student tutors. Um, they've been training and learning how to lead the tutorial process on their own. Um, and they also helped with the um, AVID interviews and the student recruitment. Um, so I think at George Fox we are creating student leaders um, and really encouraging the students to take uh, leadership roles among their peers and throughout the school. We're very proud at Northeast that from second market period to third market period we made huge gains in our grade data and we have um, equity and access for all students in AP and honors classes and they're performing very well in those classes. This year at Marley Middle School our AVID team has been working really hard trying to get a lot of our strategies to go school-wide. Um, every day in homeroom or advisory periods we monitor students grades in the whole building and students have binder and agenda checks every week. Um, they calculate their GPA every um, interim and report card 
So those are just a few of the strategies that we use in homeroom regularly. And then in advisory, we work hard on team building activities and college awareness lessons on a monthly basis. So we're really proud at what we're doing with, at Marley. One thing that I'm really proud of um, is the emphasis on Wicker in our AVID program. Our students are really working on marking the text um, and we hope to take all of those Wicker strategies school-wide next year. My name's Rhonda Biscop and I'm the site coordinator at Brooklyn Park Middle School. I'm really proud of the students there because this year they've really improved their collaboration skills. They're um, working well together and in, during tutorials they're asking higher level questions. Um, and I look forward to seeing them improve even more with his um, collaboration skills. My name is Paige Menefee and I'm the AVID coordinator at Lindale Middle School. Um, and this year we're really proud of our students. One of the things that we uh, started this year was a student ambassador program with our AVID students. They have to apply in order to be a student ambassador. Um, and they do things like volunteer at our parent night, um, assist with hallway decorations as far as uh, bulletin boards in the school. They are leaders in our student advisory. Um, they help students in the school who are having difficulty with organization and time management. Um, and they've really become leaders in the building. And again, they had to apply for this program, or sorry, they had to apply to be a student ambassador, um, and they were chosen from our site team. So we're really proud of the students uh, that did that this year. One of the great things happening at Barnack is our site team, uh, with the support of Mr. Todd, our principal, has been able to do faculty professional development at least four times this year where we've been able to teach other teachers about just good teaching practices that AVID incorporates. Um, so now more teachers at Broadneck are incorporating AVID strategies in their classrooms. Hi, my name is Gina Glennon. I am the AVID site coordinator at McAfee River Middle School. One of the greatest things that I'm very proud of is our scores. Um, AVID students outperform the non-AVID students each marking period and their demographics by at least 10 percent. From this certification day mm -hmm. and from these portfolios, the work of the team is studied, their responses for the certification mm -hmm. tool are reviewed, and then a certification status is sent to AVID Center. So a school is deemed an AVID certified site mm -hmm. or a highly certified site, and that information is forwarded to AVID Center mm -hmm. for acceptance. Right. What happens after that? Well, we do it all again next year. I and mean, it's then we start with in this a lot of groups meet in the summer, whether it's through summer institute or a path training or simply getting their site team together to take a look at all of those recommendations from the previous year. What did we do well? What can we still work on? Because there's always more to improve until we get 100% of students having the opportunity to go to a four-year college. So tell me a little bit about this Summer Institute mm -hmm. or PATH training that you mentioned. Sure, so we offer several different opportunities. AVID always offers a Summer inst Institute. Uh, we go to Philadelphia and it's a really incredible time where site teams get the chance to learn by attending various trainings specific to tutorials or even AVID within the math classroom, leadership, uh, career and college readiness, culturally relevant teaching was a really big hit this year. And after those trainings, they get to come back together, have a chance to share what they've learned, and then also get a head start on the process that they're starting all over again from the year before, creating a new site team goal based on the recommendations from the year before. And so you're saying that this training isn't just for AVID teachers, right. it's for teachers throughout the school um, principals, assistant principals. Yes. So it's really like a team focus to get everyone on the same page. Absolutely. And at these trainings they start thinking about mm -hmm. their goal for the next year right? and what they need to do to make this happen. Mm -hmm. um, is there time at these institutes or trainings for teams to collaborate with teams from other schools as well? Absolutely. They'll get a chance to uh, throughout their pat their trainings that they have they're getting ideas from different districts that have avid from all over the country so that's a really exciting thing too and we usually see a high influx of ideas after a summer institute because you do you get to collaborate what are people doing in Texas and California and Florida and how can I take those ideas and bring them back to my area to better our students and I'm sure that collaboration really helps us to drill down into some of the issues that we're having, maybe with like recruiting tutors or, you know, um, providing advisory lessons that help all students with their college, college and career readiness 
goals. Um, so this sounds like a great opportunity for everyone involved. Yes, everyone is very, very excited when they get an opportunity to attend Summer Institute. It's, we've built a culture within the county where that is a coveted spot for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today, Alexis, to talk about certification. And thank you for joining us on Avid Achievers. We'll see you next time.